Hawaiian Music out of the Streets. I'm also a 2008 Hawaii Corps member. This summer, I taught seventh grade writing at Jackson Middle School. Words that were hard for him to pronounce. 
However, when I asked Uriel to explain what the paragraph was about, his eyes shot to his feet, and he started to fiddle with that same pencil again. Now it was clear. Uriel was, Uriel was able to put the sounds together, but he did not understand the meaning of anything he was reading. I made Uriel promise to come in at lunch each day, and then I would bring paragraphs for him to read, and worksheets for him to complete, so that he could get more practice time outside. Out of the 21 students in my seventh grade writing class, Julian scored the highest on his diagnostic assessment. He had the most ambitious end of institute target. However, it quickly became apparent that Julian did not plan to participate this year. He rarely attended class, and he had a 36 average on his formative assessment. Who was this student who had the potential to earn an A in summer school, but chose to miss class and not complete homework? Who was this student who refused to respond even though he had the correct answers? Who was this student who without a doubt had the capability of shattering his end of institute goal but would possibly not pass the seventh grade at all? My greatest challenge would be to answer these questions and get Julian on the right track to realizing his potential. obnoxious jokes and gestures. Some students grew irritated by him, but a greater number laughed and watched him with admiration. It wasn't until five minutes before dismissal that Edwin grew tired, and the rest of my students quieted down and looked ahead. We went through our dismissal procedure as I thought long and hard about what had just happened. On his way out the door, Edgar turned and said, I'm sorry, miss. And that was the last I heard from him for the next two weeks. I tried as hard as possible not to be relieved, but I couldn't help myself. He had, after all, exclaimed that he wanted to be held back in sixth grade again so he could be the only sixth grader with a car. In five weeks, how could I ever change such an attitude? Though Uriel posed my greatest challenge as a teacher this summer, his ultimate success represents my greatest success. As we worked through that first lunch hour together, I spent half an hour explaining the difference between there, T-H-E-R-E, and there, T-H-E-I-R. The next half an hour, a chemistry lesson on density involved me trying to figure out how to explain the verb to sink, and not the noun of sink, where you get water from. Slowly but surely, together we made progress, and at the end of the hour, Uriel looked at me with a smile and said, Miss, can we do this every day? At that moment, I knew the words were really coming alive to Uriel, and finally, he was learning. Surprised, I looked at him and replied, You can calm. Looking back to all the lunch hours, I will always remember the frustration on his face when the words seemed to be an endless maze of confusion. But after three weeks of lessons, he looked up at me and stated simply, Miss, I think I finally get it. Uriel's success was something he could not only see, but could feel. And on Wednesday, as he earned a 91% on his final and passed my class, I realized that this was what Teacher America was all about. I did not have one single biggest success with an individual student this summer. My goal was to have success with each student. Whether it was one student who opened up to me and confessed the pain that enveloped the past four years of his life, or that one student who finally participated in class despite weeks of refusal. One particular success that comes to mind was when I graded a series of my students' assessments and compared them to their initial diagnostic scores. I had a student who scored 10% on his diagnostic, and yet earned 100% on his assessment. I have been blessed to have success throughout this summer with each of my students in various fashions. I truly believe that every worthwhile experience is marked by outstanding people. 
As I head back to St. Louis, I want to take a little bit of each person I met here at the Houston Institute back with me. From the staff at my high school, to my STL floor mates, to my CMA group, to the movie cafeteria workers, to the regional staff, to the bus drivers, to the institute management team. These are the people who have touched me, and these are the people who made Teach for America great. take my students with me. Yep, all of them. In my suitcase, I'm taking every one of them with me to my region. I wish. But I will take what they have taught me. Mercedes, she taught me about the importance of pronunciation. The importance of pronouncing names correctly. Like the car, Mercedes. From Aaron, repetition. He taught me that when you tell a student to come in for help, come in for help, come in for help, one day he's going to come in for help. <laughs> Sebastian taught me about what's not said, reading between the lines. We call it inferencing in English class. He taught me to make sure I don't pass up the quiet students for not understanding as he was on his way to mastery in every objective. While I discussed character traits, Jennifer, her presence in room 212, taught me about the character traits of a leader that can swing a class into work. I hope I taught Jonathan how to notice the details of a text because he taught me how to notice the details of improvement in my students. I hope my kids will retain every lesson we went over in room 212 at Davis High School, but I also hope that I will not forget the lessons that they taught me. As I head to my region, I will take with me the fact that our students have potential far beyond what anyone thinks of them. They simply need appropriate stimulation and outlets in order to display their intellect and passion. As well as an instructional leader who is not hesitant to do anything necessary to invest in their students. As I open the door to let the students in, I visibly tightened, recognizing Edgar as he walked towards me. I nodded at him, smiling slightly, wondering what would happen today. What did happen that day turned out to be my best institute memory. We began the lesson on angles, estimation, and measurement. As I asked questions, Edgar's hand kept shooting up. What kind of angle is this, I asked, pointing at the board. A cube. It looks about 45 degrees. I smiled. Exactly. Throughout the rest of the class, Edgar worked alongside his classmates, answering questions and participating in group work. I quickly scribbled a note. Edgar, I was so happy to see you again today. Thank you so much for participating, and I was really impressed at how much you know. I hope I get a chance to work with you again, Miss LK. I slid the note to him quickly and walked to the back of the room. I curiously watched him as he glanced at the note and then paused as he read through the words. I held my breath as I heard him utter, cool, and go back to his work. <laughs> <laughs> my best institute memory took place while reading over Dewey House from the first week of class. I came upon Evelyn's signature pink hand. The question I had posed was simple. What can Mr. Tease do to help you pass the seventh grade? While many students responded with answers ranging from make class more fun and make homework easier, <laughs> Evelyn had provided me with a full page of her signature pink handwriting. She wrote, Just keep doing what you're doing, Mr. Tease. Don't tell anybody, but you're the best teacher that we've all ever had. No one will tell you that, but we all think it. I couldn't help but well up with tears as I finally realized why I had come to Teach for America. I had been in Houston for only two weeks and I had already reached a 13-year-old girl who was well on her way to the age group. This summer, I learned that we, as core members, are the leaders of our classrooms. Our students can only go as far as we lead them. Every action we take has a direct impact on the success of our students. What a challenge. 
What a weight to bear. However, everyone in this room is capable of extraordinary things in their own classrooms. Everyone in this room is here for a reason. We are leaders. Over the past five weeks, I have learned that every single person in this room is capable of leading their students to tremendous academic gains. Now, it is up to us to go out and to do it. This summer, I learned that it really is all about the kids. I realized that even though I had to stay up really late, if the, le the lesson plan was successful, it was worth it. I sometimes felt like a failure, and there would surely be no way to ever recover. But I had to pick myself up, because in the end, I need to be learning from every possible moment. My most important learning experience? Teaching is going to be the hardest thing I have ever done. Nothing about teaching will be easy. But seeing the spark and the hope and the achievement of my kids will definitely make it worth it. My greatest hope for this movement is that it will cease being exactly that, a movement. That it will become the norm for all children to receive the opportunities they deserve. I hope that we never allow an initial interaction to shape the way that we lead our students. Just the way that we never want our students to judge and label us based on our first time teaching them. I hope that we move forward with open hearts and open minds, and most importantly, don't forget to celebrate the small victories. My hope for myself, as well as for our movement, is that we continue to do whatever it takes to keep our core beliefs grounded. In a couple of weeks, I'll be in Hawaii, in the middle of the ocean. I imagine that sometimes I'll feel like an island, and that no matter what region you're teaching in, you might too. I imagine I'll be reaching out to my PD for the same type of support that I've re re received from my CMA and my FA. I'll freak out because the IP is just not aligned with the IMM, and the GP is way off balance, and I'm thinking, OMG. <laughs>